Okay, happy November 2024, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, this is our monthly free open studio that um, you got invited to because you are in any of my online programs, including the free ones, or you're friends with someone who's in an online program. <laughs> and, um, and I just love the opportunity to circle up each month, um, give you all a chance to connect with each other, um, it's just amazing. Uh, I've realized over the years now, Zooming around the world with you all is that I am so much better, healthier, happier, <laughs> because I Zoom with you all. Um, it always reminds me about what is true and important, and I get to be around other like-hearted people. And um, energetically, we you know, we source energy and it um, entrains and amplifies and all that. So um, how many of you are new to like have just, okay, hi, Jennifer. Anyone else? Reverend Lynn Ward. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, beautiful. Hi, Lena. Um, I am super chillax about these things. I feel like we're all kind of finding each other again. Um, we have this shared passion for creativity and the arts and how it ripples out and is meant to ripple out and has always rippled out into the art that is our life. Um, and, and we are um, in a really interesting time right now for most of us, um, just in kind of a liminal space, um, adjusting to some newness in our reality. And um, I do believe that these are the times we have been preparing for um, because yeah, in any creative activity, um, there is contrast and there is um, construction as well as deconstruction are both very necessary parts. Um, we learn best through contrast for better or for worse. <laughs> And, um, and I firmly believe that um, the more we sink into our creative practice, the more what is true will come through um, for each of us, um, the ability to perceive and kind of curate um, our space energetically um, is huge. And um, when I say energetically and things like that, I'm coming from the truth that everything is energy and energy behaves by certain laws. And so what we see and read and listen to and the people we surround ourselves with impact our energy, our frequency. And so just like turning the, the radio dial, remember radio dials? <laughs> now it's like Spotify radio channels or something. Um, but you can just understand, right? Like which music you listen to changes your mood, right? Very very much. Um, I'm currently on a new workout regimen, which has me listening to like pop music and Katy Perry. And all of that is a very different vibe <laughs> than like Liquid Bloom Radio, right? So um, so that's kind of, you know, what I'm speaking to. And um, ever since I opened my art center, a bricks and mortar art center that no longer exists, but I opened it in 1996 in Nashville, Tennessee, um, with no art training, I still have no formal art training, um, but it's been 29 years. So, um, but the entire focus always, always, always from the very, very, very beginning is, was this aha that um, in order to create the life of our dreams, we have to adopt an artist mentality, which I read in a book called Zen and the Art of Making a Living when I was selling books door to door three years out of college. Um, so I was pretty sure that real life was much more like a blank canvas than anything they taught me in school. And I didn't see where anyone was teaching this artist mentality. So I just kind of jumped in and um, kind of a la Unstoppable Dream, my latest book, 30 Days to Unstoppable, which honestly, if you don't have it, you really, really want to get it. And people who have it can type in the chat or it's free. The first 21 days are free on my YouTube channel. But like literally I was asking source energy. Thank you, Don. Um, thank you, Sandra. Um, I was asking like, where are we going to source our sense of security um, as the world inevitably um, reorganizes itself 
to get to where we want to be, which is a world based in love, not fear, which like why we're debating whether or not we want to live from love or fear. I don't know. But anyway, um, I was given this process. This was in 2018. And I launched the online program February 2020. So um, it's been a very timely teaching, which um, I take only ownership as far as I was a really good channel, but I promise it is like just truth that came through. And one of the six spheres of wellness is gratitude, which this being Thanksgiving week um, for most of us. And so the rest of you, we're just bringing you into Thanksgiving land with us. Um, I thought we would focus on gratitude and I found a new sacred symbol for gratitude. I like literally have never seen this symbol before. And I Googled, which like I am a shameless Googler. Um, I Googled, I didn't even Google sacred symbol for gratitude. I just Googled symbol for gratitude and I found a whole new symbol and you're going to love it. It's got all our favorite shapes. Um, so what I'm going to offer is uh, I'm going to show the symbol and um, I'm, the prompt is to paint, draw the symbol. So I'm going to be painting, drawing it on this first layer that I have already created in my journal. Um, this is like a creative frequency musing. So the creative frequency process, first and foremost, this energy is personal. And it wants you to play, play, play and get out of this like productive product oriented, be a good creator mindset and just lose yourself in possibility. So I have lots of these first layers <laughs> available to me. So um, if you don't have a first layer, you're welcome to draw it, paint it on anything at all. And you're welcome to just hang out and chill and listen in if you'd like as well. And maybe you watch the replay later, which will be on my YouTube channel. So um, so let me show you the symbol. And first, let me just uh, mention uh, one of the like gratitude teachings that came through with 30 Days to Unstoppable that I absolutely love and I've been using ever since. And it is not only completely restorative in the moment, but it's also highly, highly effective in getting to where you want to be. And that is about sending gratitude into your future, okay? So just to use an example that some of us may have coming up, um, say you're going to be spending Thanksgiving with family. <laughs> and maybe, you know, sometimes there's, you know, the classic like crazy uncle or whatever. Anyway, you can imagine going into Thanksgiving, imagine yourself like driving home from Thanksgiving or, you know, getting into bed with your full turkey belly and um, and just being so grateful for a really awesome time with special people. And just imagine yourself like in snuggling under the covers and just being like, wow, that was actually the most awesome Thanksgiving. So it's putting and imagining yourself feeling grateful in the future. Um, I did it with the studio. I looked out, the studio was just like falling down it was gross. It was an old shop from, you know, how many years ago. And I imagined standing outside right here where my car's parked, writing a check to the contractor, being so grateful for the money in the checking account, the contractor that I found, which is no small feat around here. And um, within a year, I was doing that. So um, I do believe when what you're desiring is in alignment with the highest and greatest good, um, that gratitude is a super powerful way to stay coherent, stay resonant with your chosen future reality. Um, it's super easy speaking from experience to think like, oh, I really want this to be great. I really want to have a fabulous Thanksgiving. And then you start worrying, right? I really want a new studio, but oh, I just spent all this money redoing the house and blah, 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 blah. Um, so we want something and then we start filling our space up energetically with all the reasons why we can't have it. So we flip it with gratitude. So anyway, so there's lots of ways to play with this energy and this symbol is going to be um, really exciting. So without further ado, let me share my screen and share the symbol with you. And um, some of you here, I know we've probably got <laughs> half a dozen Reiki masters in here. Um, this was on a, some Reiki sites. So I had never seen this Reiki symbol, but it, if it is, you all can let me know. Um, okay. 
So let's see in this. Okay, so this is the first one I found. You see this symbol here? Can you all see that? Right? So it's um, it's this circle. You see, it is a total circle. And then it's got a spiral coming in the middle. And then this other little beginning of a spiral, a hook coming off the bottom with these three little dots. Now, there's another version, which I'm going to show you as well. This one. So this one is on this website medium, and this one was on this um, reikidivine.co.uk. Okay. So I'm going to invite you. So this one from the medium has a little more going on, doesn't it? <laughs> so we've got um, this one is kind of a continuous spiral. So it starts in the middle and spirals, 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 spirals out, and then the little hook. And we got three dots here and five dots there. Tesla would probably want six dots here and three dots here. Anyway, um, so these are two different versions of this. Now, here's the thing about symbols, kind of a la creative frequency. Uh, it's not about, it doesn't have to be perfect, right? And, um, and I've also found, especially working with sacred geometry, drawing sacred geometry, that if the symbol doesn't kind of flow right at the beginning, perhaps it's because you're being called to focus in more on, in this case, gratitude, right? So, um, so yeah, but it doesn't look like any of you are hesitating whatsoever, which I love. Um, I'm actually gonna take my big old golden, bottle of fluorescent pink. So the creative frequency really loves fluorescent pink for some reason. And so I had to get a big old bottle of it. So as you paint the symbol, just invite in this energy of gratitude. I'm going to turn on some music about that. Let's see how this goes. Let's turn on some music.
want to um, read. You can keep drawing the symbol or you can look at it and start getting curious about why this is a sacred symbol for gratitude for yourself, right? Um, learning to kind of look at symbols, which everything is a symbol, and discern for yourself what it symbolizes for you is, is like a practice. And it gets easier and easier. And I feel like it's um, becoming more and more important to look at things symbolically helps to kind of rise above and look at it from an angle that encourages more creativity and objectivity than like reacting, for example. So I asked um, my pendulum for a Radiant Sutra to read to kind of add energy to our gratitude symbol and check this one out. Find something so enchanting to behold that you are transfixed, ravished. Allow yourself to be captivated. Gaze upon its form with the eyes of wonder. Attend to details, this shape, texture, these colors, how can something so beautiful possibly exist? With a steady gaze, melt into the field of space embracing that form. At once, be at one with the creator who is looking through your eyes, loving creation. I'm gonna read this one more time. So literally, pendulum offered this, right? So as you look at your symbol or you can imagine anything you want, find something so enchanting to behold that you are transfixed, ravished. Allow yourself to be captivated. Gaze upon its form with the eyes of wonder. Attend to details, the shape, texture, these colors. How can something so beautiful possibly exist? With a steady gaze, melt into the field of space, embracing that form. At once, be at one with the creator who is looking through your eyes, loving creation. So in these circles, we often talk about how our role is really more like the paintbrush. Like we are the vehicle, the vessel through which creation happens. And so any uh, thoughts along the lines of not being worthy, not being good enough are met with this creator energy that's infinite, your infinite self, the, the big magic, right? The idea that found you, that found resonance, that's wanting to come through you, that has everything it needs, but it needs the paintbrush to touch the surface to create the creation. The paintbrush doesn't need to have all the answers or know what to do. It just needs to surrender to the artist and allow itself to be created with, through. And that's really what this is speaking to as well, right? That our eyes are the eyes that get to see this physical reality. We are the boots on the ground, so to speak, <laughs> right? So I'm sorry, I didn't have a chance to catch the symbol. Yes. Um, could, could you okay, put it somewhere? You, yes, I'll show you what I just did a pretty simple version. So it's a circle, 
you see the circle first and uh -huh. then the spiral coming in uh -huh. and then this kind of other spiral hook coming off with three dots. Uh -huh. This is amazing because just recently I did. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me turn this on because you guys. Okay, there you go. Yes. Who was speaking? Helen. 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 Oh, hey, Helen. Okay. No, I was um, just, 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 just recently, recently did this, did this, uh, the, the symbol. symbol. Wow. Um, and it's and very, it's, it's very, very similar. similar. It is really, isn't it? it it's, it's, it's just, just mind-blowing mind blowing because <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know. Even, even, anyway, anyway, if I even come to, right? to this class, and uh, uh, I, want I want to use, use this one, one for this symbol, symbol. Mm -hmm. because, because there is already, already that energy, energy and frequency, frequency there. there. Exactly, exactly. That's lovely. That's unbelievable. No, no, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, I, I still I can't believe all the synchronicities. Right, I know. I always say that. I'm like, why do I keep being surprised, or why do we? Why do I uh, say I'm more like this is crazy because it just keeps happening? But yeah, exactly. Thank you, Helen. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, beautiful. Yeah, this book is the Radiant Sutras by Lauren Roche. Um. Okay, so as you look at this symbol. Think first about, or perceive, or receive first the circle. Feels like kind of the, the main structure of the gratitude symbol. And what does circle mean to you? You can type in the chat and we will um, yeah, have time for people to share as well. But the circle And then the spiral coming out of the circle in the middle. And then the hook on the bottom. Does it matter which direction the hook goes? Um, I don't think so in well actually let me share the screen again so we can look at it um, so this spiral is coming in and going counterclockwise right if you come mm -hmm. from the outside and then and then this one is feels like it's going the other way right so this one is spiraling within. Ooh, okay. And this one's coming without. So, so what I just got is an example. And then if anyone else wants to share, um, what I just understood kind of explaining that is that first, the invitation is to generate and choose to express, feel, align with the energy of gratitude within. And then once that happens and you are you have this energy of gratitude within you, then this um, you know for me it would be like the infinite me or spirit can move out from me to hook more gratitude. And then the three dots are suggestive that this, this hook um, can go, you know, dimensionally, space time. <laughs> it has no limits, right? It's like the opposite would be, um, you know, okay, Whitney, I don't have anything to feel grateful about. When I get something to feel grateful for, I will start generating gratitude right kind of that like i'm gonna wait to feel ready and then i will leap <laughs> which i mean um don't take that literally as far as leaping i speaking of leaping 
um, I do generate gratitude before I launch my paraglider. Every single time I imagine landing and feeling grateful and excited, I put that in my future every time I launch off the mountain. It's highly effective. <laughs> I love that. Does anyone else have any um, any musings to share on the symbol or gratitude? Or anything you would like to ask the circle to collectively send gratitude into your future for? We can do that together as well. I'm also going to speak to um, receiving a symbol for your new year, 2025, because we are in that season. I have received mine, which is super exciting. Does anyone want to add anything about the gratitude symbol? Okay, Jennifer says, I love the playfulness of the dots and the curly cue, a feeling of lightness and fun that comes from expressing gratitude. Ooh, I love that. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, right? Like spirals and curly cues aren't usually connected to seriousness and, you know, we got a plan. I personally am quite averse to seriousness. <laughs> I learned in my life. I love that. Mm. So um, ways to work with symbols, and I'll just use this symbol as an example. Um, so symbols have um, multifaceted, multi-layered, multi-dimensional, pick your favorite multi-word, um, energy and information. Okay, because just like um, Jennifer just illustrated um, and Stephanie, so I love that. I like the feeling of having gratitude within and being able to spread that to those around me. Absolutely, that's beautiful. Um, everybody sees a little something different when they look at a symbol, right? And likewise, when you work with symbols, um, they meet you where you are and they offer different insight or information or feelings or energy or wisdom, depending on where you are. They meet you where you are, right? So for me, you could imagine that uh, the theme of going within first so that then it can echo kind of... Um, outside of me, that was for me. Stephanie, um, the spreading gratitude around, that is coming to Stephanie that way for a reason. And Jennifer, the lightness of being for a reason, right? Likewise, next time I look at this symbol, something totally different could come to me. And that would be because that is what the symbol has for me in that moment. Um, an easier example is I remember uh, meditating with Owl, which many of you know, Owl is kind of my symbol, my main animal totem. And um, when you meditate with symbols, you allow the symbol to kind of distract the go, 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 do, do, do monkey mind, right? So you bring the symbol into your awareness and kind of focus on that to distract, to disrupt our normal you know, that ticker tape of constant <laughs> to-dos. And um, and so when I was meditating with Owl, it was right after someone had sent me uh, an image of this like purple sparkly Christmas tree topper. Because lots of people know I love owls and so I get owl images sent all the time. And, and I was like, ooh, I want a purple sparkly owl Christmas tree topper. And, um, and I sat down to meditate an owl, like this big owl with her talons, like swooped in and she was like, I'm not always purple, sparkly, sweet owl. Like I am a fierce predator. 
and you can be a fierce predator too right that like going for what you want and choosing and focusing and you know getting what you need and having the strength and the stealth and you know all of that and so it was kind of like yes ma'am <laughs> right so um so these symbols are are fluid and will meet you where you are um the year i worked with b it was uh 2018 and uh when you work with a symbol for the year, which I'll, I'll get into, but you kind of open up like right now, if you're like, I want a symbol for the year. So, you know, we used to do like New Year's resolutions. I feel like those are very old paradigm and no one talks about those anymore. Um, and then a lot of people get words for the year, which I think is awesome. Right. Um, and then I got in like 2013, 14, um, to look ask for a symbol for the year and so you ask for one set the intention okay I'm ready and then you pay attention to symbols that repeat themselves um, symbols that you find that you're kind of immediately attracted to um, or feel like they have a lot of energy right so usually um, if I see a symbol and it's like ooh, are you my symbol for the new year then I will wait. I'll be like, okay, let me know. And usually within the next 24 or 48 hours, it comes up again. It repeats itself. And that's how you know. Um, so 2018, um, the bee came to me, the bumblebee, the honeybee, and I love bees and um, you can go there forever. Very multidimensional. And um, that year was the year that I found my house that I purchased and I moved out of my rental that I'd been in for six years into my house. And it wasn't until after I moved in that I was like, oh, the bee like guided me to my hive, right? Um, so oh, you just never know what the symbol is going to have in store. Um, Stephanie, you have a bee tattoo? I don't know if I've seen your bee tattoo. Yes, symbols tend to lead often to tattoos, but don't worry if you're like super don't want tattoos, don't worry. <laughs> but uh, it does get kind of um, kind of fun that way. Um, okay, Carol looked up the symbol. The hook is recognized as moku, which is a significance in Hawaiian. Yes, um, I did see that explained as well. So um, I wanted you all to, um, which is great, Carol, that you looked that up and um, I wanted to invite you first to receive it for yourself, you know, what you perceive for yourself, and then you can look it up and it's all valid, right? Um, it's just more and more information. Um, so, so anyway, so symbols um, are, they just, they have more, it feels to me like they have more to offer, um, more dimension to them more than a word, which doesn't mean a word doesn't have a lot. The other thing that I love about working with symbols is you can find a symbol to attach to like a vision or a goal or a desire that you have. And, um, and the symbol has zero to little baggage connected to the goal than perhaps words. Um, so like in my book, Rise Above, in the clarity chapter, there's a process where you find a symbol to connect to a vision that you have. Um, and I have the example of the one that I got for to help me when I was worried that I wasn't going to be able to grow my business enough to sustain myself. This was after leaving my marriage and needing to make more money and having lots of credit card debt. And, and I was afraid that I was not a workaholic enough. Like I cannot work that hard um and uh that i just wouldn't have what it like i whatever wouldn't put my nose to the grindstone hard enough and so i asked for a symbol to help visualize growing my business enough to sustain myself and i got the hot air balloon because when i thought about growing my business i had this long list of like faults and shortcomings that i had but the hot air balloon like I freaking love hot air balloons. Who doesn't love hot air balloons, right? It has nothing to do with business. And the message I got from the hot air balloon was to keep my vibration high and share from that place and it would be blue skies. And I'm like, well, shit, damn, I can do that. Like keep my vibration high and share from that place. Like, heck yeah. So the hot air balloon became what I focused on whenever I'd feel like, 
oh, I wish I could pay more on this credit card. I'm like, hot air balloon, hot air balloon. And I just focused on that. Um, so words kind of had baggage, right? I also got the caterpillar going into a butterfly connected to my um, vision that my kids were going to be better off as a result of me ending my marriage um, rather than the screwing them up thing. And uh, so I went to do a soul scribble and I got the caterpillar and the butterfly and it was like the message immediately was they will find their wings, but you have to allow them their own natural time, you know, and they will get there. And, um, and then I would visualize, and I did this, I visualized wearing like a butterfly scarf, you know, those scarves that have like the wings on them. So I pictured myself in the future, kind of like the gratitude thing. So you can put your symbols in the future. So I imagined myself in the future, um, wearing that butterfly scarf at something, you know, some event where my kids were, um, more um, emotionally intelligent and consciously loved as a result of our divorce. And, um, and one of the coaches actually sent me one. I have to find it because, um, anyway, it's all like been super helpful. So instead of worrying that I screwed up my kids, I just pictured the caterpillar coming, becoming a butterfly. Um, so to help them as well as myself. So these symbols can be really, really helpful when you have tricky, um, things in your life and the words can trigger, you know, I mean, the classic is like, oh, I want abundance. And then you start thinking like, but my bank account is this, that, or the other. Um, lotus flower is a symbol of abundance. Rabbits are symbols of abundance. Like attach a symbol to the abundance and then focus on that and look for abundance in all the ways that it is. And then you just become this abundance magnet. And um, so symbols are just these really, really powerful tools. And I'm so passionate about working with them and using them. So for the new year, for 2025, if you'd like to receive a symbol, would anyone like to receive a symbol for 2025? <laughs> yes, please, right? Um, so the first thing is just to maybe take a moment and, um, and imagine yourself choosing that you are saying yes to your highest expression in 2025. So meeting challenges with a lightness of being, with an open heart, with curiosity, with wonder, with radical acceptance, with resiliency, maybe your ability to intuitively get whatever you need to meet whatever situation, people coming alongside to support out of nowhere. It doesn't mean life isn't going to offer some wonkiness in 2025, right? Oh, we just have a hunch. And you're choosing to meet whatever life presents to you from your highest perspective as best you can, at least 51% of the time. And you're asking for a symbol that's going to help you in those moments where you're teetering between 49, 48, 47.5, 32, 25, you bring the symbol into your mind's eye. It's also a fabulous excuse to go on Etsy and get some jewelry like your symbol. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and then the symbol is going to help you in that moment. Like choose the perspective that serves you the best. So you ask, whatever you ask, I would like a symbol, I am open to receive a symbol, I'm excited to receive a symbol, I am grateful that I received this magical symbol for 2025. I usually receive two. There's usually one, and not this year, but often one's an animal and then this other one just comes along or you know one or the other and it's more like a symbol. This past year was the lotus flower and the rainbow, which both have to do with, of course, like kind of rising from the muck and the, you know, the rainbow after the storm. I'll share my symbols for 2025 in 2025. <laughs> Since who knows, they could still be morphing. 
So then once you've opened to receive, you just get curious. And I want you to notice if you um, feel, start feeling like pressure or fear that you're not gonna receive one, right? Or comparing like, well, Whitney receives symbols, but like, I'm fine. Like, I don't, my mind doesn't work that way. I'm not good with symbols, like whatever it is, just notice that. Because we always, witnessing what's going on inside is highly beneficial. And then, like I mentioned, you'll see something, someone will mention something, something will pop up, usually slightly unexpectedly. You know, like in the case of an animal, it, it like I've never seen a coyote in my neighborhood and phew, I almost ran over one, you know, something like that. Um, or it will come up multiple times, um, it, you know, within like 24, 48 hours, or it'll come up right after you're in one of those kind of potent moments you know, not like writing out your grocery list, but one of those like, what am I gonna do? Or I really wanna, you know, meet the new year like this or something significant has you frustrated or whatever. And then you see a symbol that seems to speak right to you, right? It just resonates. And then see if it repeats, see if it affirms itself. Okay, Stephanie, the snake just came on into your mind full on. Right, so now Stephanie is just gonna get curious and if snakes keep showing up, you'll have to um, post. Ooh, Lori got a feather. Oh, feathers are one of my favorites. I could just use feather every year, really, if I could. I mean, I could, of course, I can do whatever I want with symbols, <laughs> but, um, but I try and stay open to new symbols. But yeah, feather. I worked with feather, I think it was 2017. And wow, whenever anything has you heavy, it could be kind of our community symbol for 2025, maybe. You just picture a feather and it's like this lightness of being. I would just feel this lightness of being wash over me. And, and then as you research, so you're, you're welcome, of course, to Google or you know, whatever search engine you use, right? To search um, the meaning of the symbol. And um, when I did that, I learned um, or relearned or was remembered into the story of the goddess Mott, the Egyptian goddess Mott, which I went to Egypt in uh, 2021. It's a very significant trip. Um, and I remember learning and seeing the goddess Mott. And she's the one that has the scale where she's got a heart, on, like a little heart on one side of the scale and a feather on the other. And she, the story is, is that she stands at the threshold to the afterlife. And if your heart weighs less than a feather, you get to pass into the afterworld. Otherwise, it's like back into another body. <laughs> so every time I heard that story up until the feather came to me in 2017, I mean, even my logical brain was like, my heart's always going to weigh more than a feather. I mean, how in the world? Right? Like even from that perspective, I was just like, oh, that sounds impossible. And then dirt in 2017, it was like living with a lightness of being. You know, if you've lived with the lightness of being, then your Heather's, Heather, your heart is lighter than a feather and you can enter into the afterlife. So that, that nugget of like, really, really, really has changed a lot. Um, dragonflies are helpful for that too. You know, you see a dragonfly and it just barely touches down and then it's off again. And it barely touches down and is off again. And so I used Dragonfly, it was a couple years ago, and um, whenever anything threatened to pull me down or feel heavy, I would just imagine just like touching down and bing, and I'm off. Like I'm not letting it weigh me down. So, um, so that's another powerful symbol. So I love it. Um, lions in their eyes on my breathwork sessions. Yeah, Maria, I love that. Right, so you just think about what about male lions? Maybe you're being called to rest more, Maria. <laughs> I also always the first thing I think of is how much they sleep. Um, <laughs> serenity wellness, more rest, beautiful. <laughs> Or roar, yes. Um, the lioness in Rise Above is um, the animal totem for the joy chapter. 
And I got that because um, she was roaring to protect your boundaries, right? So you know how, especially for women, I feel like it can be hard to be like, no, actually, I'm going to go do something totally unproductive just because I want to do it and it feels good and like, back off, <laughs> like defend my space, you know, <sighs> don't like, mom, I wanted to <sighs> like get away. I'm in my joy over here. Um, so that's why the, the lioness came, <laughs> came to me for the joy symbol. Oh, it's so much fun. And so. What I truly believe is that life is symbolic, like everything is symbolic and, and we're being called to understand the symbolic nature, right? And you can also look back on symbols, like if any of you collected things as kids or had kind of a symbol as a kid, like the strawberry. I was a strawberry girl just because my mom got apparently these expensive sheets that have strawberries on them. Um, but strawberry, turns out, is one of the symbols for Freya that I found out much later. So, like, symbols, yeah, symbols have been in your space and resonating with you um, throughout your life for a long time. I had a cable guy come into my house, my rental house that had lots of wall space. So there was like so many paintings in that house. And I'd forget that people who didn't know me, you know, like, like the cable guy would walk in and he was just like, do you paint? <laughs> I was like, yeah. And um, he ended up sharing that his wife collected penguins. And I'm like, dude, do you know the symbolism of penguin? And he goes, no. I said, well, you look it up and you will understand your wife much, much better. Right, so it's a lovely, lovely experience, and I believe it will be a um, extremely amazing superpower to have in your utility belt. This keeps coming up, like Batman's utility belt. I think Catwoman, Wonder Woman had them. Okay, Wonder Woman's utility belt. Right, you put the symbolism thing in your utility belt. Is like pull it out and look through it and like look at things symbolically. Um, so does anyone have any questions or would you like to ask, like, Whitney, I'd love a symbol for this. And um, I usually am pretty good about intuiting or I have some other people here on this call that I know would also be good at intuiting. Yeah, Helen, unmute yourself. And you can also type in the chat. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, too. Let's do it. Oh, we can't really hear, can you hear me. Can you hear me? Okay, say it one more time. No, I was just no, saying, that, just it's saying little, that it's a little, a little difficult to, to put stuff, put in, the put chat stuff in the chat while you're while painting. Sure. So, well, anyway, anyways, uh, my, question my question was, was can, can I use, I use this thing? Well, we, can't, we can't hear you very well. Let me think, let me see if this answers your question because I did mean to offer this and I feel like maybe you're answering this or asking this. So another way to work with this symbol, for example, um, so say you're doing this on a canvas or in your art journal, either one, this could be now your gratitude energetic symbol piece whatever you want to call it, your gratitude painting, and you go to this painting to paint, whether it's painting, adding to the symbol, adding design around the symbol, painting the words onto the canvas or the paper, I am grateful. So you go into your future and you imagine what it is you're grateful and you speak as if you're already there and it's already happening and you're already grateful. Right? Mm -hmm. Not I will be grateful when dot dot dot. No, no, no. It's I am grateful that I have that this arrived that the studio got built that I had a fabulous Thanksgiving with family, whatever it is. Um, so that's a way to build the energy of the symbol for you and and can amplify this energy of gratitude within you. Um, and pretty yeah, much yeah, that was, every, the was that the question? Okay, perfect. Um, so, so I wanted, I wanted to, use, to that use that symbol, symbol 
of gratitude for the 2025. Yes, because that's that's a present Yeah, yeah, right. And you had the canvas all ready to go, and amazing. Beautiful. Yeah, it's yeah, actually, it's actually, actually pretty good. Pretty good. I have to still recognize that. that, 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 that yeah, yeah, beautiful. I will put some, some other, other sacred stuff. Yeah. But, but actually, actually, just, just sit right there. It flowed. Yeah. I love it. It flowed. It, flowed. it really did. Thank and that you. that's Thank another you. great sign. That's another example. Thank you, Helen, for, you know. I have good like ones. So 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 yeah, yeah. I love this symbol. I cannot believe I have not seen this symbol before. That is just really heart blowing. Incredible. Okay, Wendy's got the butterfly. Very powerful. I love it. Thank you, Helen. Um, does anyone else have a question or a symbol you want to share, or maybe a symbol that's been significant for you to offer to all of us? Yeah, Dawn. Hi. I'd like I'd a like symbol for surrender. For surrender? Yeah, what does everybody do? Hmm. So this open heart feeling, that kind of broken open feeling. So there is, so it would, it feels like it depends on the nature of the surrender, like snake is coming to me as far as the shedding of the skin, which that would be for something like, you know, big medicine for surrender, right? Like that's, um, that's a big one. And then the other one that is, um, I mean, it could be kind of the vessel or the chalice, but I'm seeing um, some sort of the hollow bone, like the, the vessel in that it's there to receive, right? Like creating that container. Like it's not about go, 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 do, do, do. Like surrendering is like an opening, right? And like, I'm not, I don't have to, do anything. I'm not going to try and control this. You know, I'm giving it up. I'm trusting. So those would be two very different. You guys feel the difference in that snake as a surrender or some sort of vessel or hollow bone or, um, you know, the flower. I love it's thinking, you know, that quote about the, you know, one day the pain it took to stay tight in the bud became greater than the pain it took to open to bloom, you know, so that blooming. Um, I feel like I it's, feel like it's, I don't know I why that, but, 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 um, um it's gone, gone my, my dog, dog. Yeah, yeah. And, and I went, I went on this statue, statue purple. Purple. I've, gone I've gone to it, to it. but there but was there a was system around, around the bottom, the bottom. Of and I was, and I was like, like, well, I've never seen it before, before. Mm, because, because all of, all of it, everything is like, like you know, she was just so I was going to be able to see a lot of her mm. until. Mm. Yeah. So, ding, ding, you got it. <laughs> yeah, the snake. Yeah, that's crazy. Love it. Snakes are such, um, they're such awesome creatures. And that, that's a whole, oof, could do a whole Zoom just on snakes. <laughs> Anyone else have anything they want to ask or share? You're welcome. Thanks, Don. Okay. Well, we can, um, you know, continue this in the Whitney. If you're in the Whitney Freya Studio Group or any of the courses you're in, you comment below any of the lessons, and I get those emails. I read all of them, um, and. You know, if a symbol comes up or and if you're in the Whitney Freya studio group, it's super fun to continue the conversation, you know, and um, oh, I found my symbol or, you know, here's how the gratitude symbol is expanded. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you want to join WhitneyFreyaStudio.com. There are lots of online courses and free courses. And of course, we have a Black Friday thing coming up. So just look for your emails starting Friday, I think. I'm doing old school, like all this early Black Friday stuff is great, right? But like, whatever, it's, it's Friday, <laughs> Friday to Monday, there is a bit of an offering going on there. So yay, yay, yay. Very grateful. Does anyone have anything else? 
It's so good to see everybody. Thank you for joining. I can't wait to hear about the ripple effects. Hi, Risa. Um, the ripple effects of the gratitude symbol and how it continues to speak. You're welcome, Amy. Yeah, so remember, I do, um, I send the invites out for these Zooms through Teachable because that's just so easy. And then, um, and it does facilitate encouraging you all to make sure that you're not opted out of those emails. Um, and then I post the replay on the YouTube channel. So if you have someone you'd like to share this with or watch it again or whatever, it'll be just look up Whitney Freya on YouTube and I'm sure you will find it. Well, I hope everyone, if you're traveling for Thanksgiving, I am sending gratitude for smooth travels and happy visiting with family and friends. And um, I'm actually going to Minneapolis. I'm going to see Kim Sales, who helps me. Many of you know Kim. And uh, yeah, my mom and I are staying at her house two nights, which is super fun. And my mom's like, well, I'm used to staying in hotels, but I can roll with it. I'm like, yeah, when I travel, I stay with my friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you all. I will see you in December. Yeah. Stay in your creative frequency. Curate your energy. You are infinitely creative beings. Nothing outside of you has more power over you than what you have within. And if you don't feel that way, then take it to the canvas because that's where we remember and we get filled up, right? It just happens every single time every single time. Mwah. Okay, bye everybody. Oh, Abrea, thank you. I'm going to end the recording. Thank you for watching.